Hey everyone, welcome back to the layout once again. In the first episode of this series, we talked about three different signal systems and went over the basics of block detection. In this episode, we'll go through a typical installation of the Atlas signal system. Most of the concepts we'll discuss are applicable to other signal systems. So let's roll up our sleeves and get started. And welcome to Model Railroading Made Simple. Alright, let's get started. All of the new plug and play Atlas signals come with this type of plug, so you'll need to drill a hole in your layout just large enough to accommodate it. Atlas also makes this $3 DIY kit that has the plug and wires ready to solder to your own signal if you choose to go that route. I have lots of the older BMLA signals and enjoy soldering so it made sense to save those expensive signals where possible. I'll tell you what is a pain though. Trying to solder upside down to a signal because I didn't want to damage them by removing them. But if you're doing a fresh install, you won't have this problem. Once the signal is installed and the cable fed through the hole, it's time to get your signal attachment cable, as Atlas calls it. But it's really an adapter cable that switches from the signal cable on one end to a standard Ethernet cable on the other. You'll notice it has two signal cables. That's not for plugging two signals in, but rather one of the cables is for the older Atlas signal system. It is useless for most installations I've come across. Now a quick word on Ethernet cables. If you want or need your signal to be more than a foot away from the control board, or you want to duplicate the signal, the Ethernet connectors are the way to go. I tested CAT5 and CAT6 rated Ethernet cable, and they both worked. I also tested some inexpensive Y splitters, which also worked. While I haven't done this yet, you could run another copy of the signal just by using a splitter. This might be useful, say, around a corner where the control point isn't yet in view of operators but signal information is needed to prevent accidents. As mentioned in the first part, these signal cables are about eight to ten dollars each, which adds up fast. Well, my first attempts to hack this eight dollar cable were unsuccessful. Um, I picked up uh, some RG25 connectors to make my own, and I also picked up a adapter and a digikey here. This is the uh, 2.5 mil, and 2.5 mil I believe refers to the spacing between the pins um, and that would replace this end of the cable. Unfortunately as you can see it's way too big. It's got the right general shape um, but uh, I've gone ahead and ordered 1.5 and 1 mil uh, size on these and we'll see if they are a good fit for this or not. Um, so if anyone knows what kind of plug this is or where to get it, like I said I'm trying to get one from DigiKey, uh, let me know and we'll save everybody eight to ten dollars uh, by replacing these cables with our own. Now the Ethernet cable will plug into the control board. As mentioned before, the boards are twenty to twenty-five dollars each and four are needed for a typical four aspect control point. Two are needed for a double headed signal protecting the diverging and main lines as we approach a siding. One minor money saver here is if you're using a DIY kit for your own signal, Atlas includes two colored versions of the adapter cable, but the cable itself is essentially the same. So purchase just one DIY kit for a double-headed signal. Then color code the blue wired adapter to match the other one and save yourself three bucks. Next, we need to run a detection wire from our block detector all the way to the appropriate signal control board. I'm using gray wire here for the detection wire to be able to easily identify them around the layout as nothing else uses gray wire. For your main line, you may need to split the detection wire for use by two different signal boards, the one for the siding and the one for the main facing the block. Going the other way towards a siding, two detectors will feed two separate boards, one for the siding, one for the main. With the signal plugged in, connect power to the signal board. Atlas provides two sets of power inputs on the board. I'm not entirely sure the logic here, but I use the inputs that are farthest from each other to reduce the chance of wires coming into contact and shorting. The input labeled COM is the negative 12 volt input. As mentioned in the last video, the 12 volt supply must be the same supply 
that powers your block detectors or the system will not work correctly. Now connect the wire from your block detector to the DIN input, which is the third input down from the top. The nice thing about the Atlas system is that you can be up and running with only four connections and the Ethernet cable plugged in. When the power is on, an LED on the board will light up. If your block detector is connected to your track section, the signal should now display the correct aspect depending on if your track is occupied or not. As I mentioned last time, I like the Iowa scaled block detectors because the detector shows both occupied red and unoccupied green LEDs right on the detector. So if you're not seeing the correct aspect on your signal, go ahead and check your block detector to confirm it has detected something. Unfortunately, the NCE BD20 doesn't provide this kind of feedback. If your signal has still not lit after turning on the 12 volt power, it may be because the signal uses a different type of wiring. Atlas accommodates the two most common types of signal wiring, common anode and common cathode, by simply moving a jumper on the control board. Jumper J2 is what you are looking for. By moving the jumper to the alternate position, you should be able to resolve 90% of no signal issues. Seeing the signal display correct block detection is pretty cool, but the thing that really sets a signal system apart is the ability to also account for a turnout position so operators can quickly tell if the switch is aligned for their route or not. In order to do this, the switch, and in this case the switch motor needs to be interlocked with the signal. I use Circuitron Tortoise switch machines, but I suspect many brands of turnout controllers have a switching feature built in like the Tortoise does. If you look at the connections on the Tortoise, the three inner ports are a switching circuit that has a common on one side and the switched leads on the outside. So what I've done here is take a negative lead from my 12 volt power supply for the signal system and connected it to the common port. Next, I run a wire from each of the switched outputs to the red signal override port on the Atlas board. This will force the signal to display a red signal even if the block detector says the block is empty. So of course you would want this to happen only when the switch is set against the section of track the signal is protecting. If the tortoise outputs are wired reversed, it's easy to fix them by swapping which wires go to which signal board. Here's an example. At this diverging signal, there is no train present on either side of the main. However, the signal for the siding, which is the lower one, is red because the switch is lined for the main. Now let's place the locomotive on the main. The block detector detects the train and switches to a red for the main as well. The siding is unaffected. By moving the locomotive over to the siding, the siding becomes occupied, but the main stays red because the switch is set against it. I haven't spent much time yet on the board interlocking, but there are two phone cable ports on each board that are designed to connect to other control boards up and down the line. Jumper ports help control what the board will do with the information from the phone cables. You can set the board to look ahead up to three boards and display yellow and other types of advanced signaling aspects. Atlas also has another product for the signal system on the horizon. Hopefully it will allow some JMRI interface to open the door for CTC operations, but it's unclear exactly what this product will do yet. So far, we've set up a basic ABS signal system. I'll continue to build out the system and produce other videos with updates as we go. Thanks for watching and keep it on the rails.